In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'm going to show you how to wind a hank of yarn into a center pull ball so that when you knit from it, the yarn doesn't lose or gain any twist. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. When you buy yarn in a hank or skein that looks like this, most people are going to need to wind it into a ball before knitting with it so they don't end up with a tangled mess. One common way to do this is to use a swift and ball winder, forming a center pull cake of yarn. What sometimes happens is that as you knit from the newly wound cake, the yarn accumulates extra twist. Other times, knitters will notice their yarn losing its twist. Well, today I'm going to explain how to wind the ball so that when you knit from it, the yarn remains balanced without gaining or losing twist. I'll also explain why the yarn sometimes does gain or lose twist. So let's get started. So both of these balls are very relaxed, but there is a difference between them. Um, with this ball, you can see that the yarn is twisting back on itself. Where with this one, there's a, it's a tiny little bit of twisting here, but it's a very relaxed yarn compared to this. I've knit them both the same amount, and this one has a lot more twist, and as I'm knitting, I'm having to try to push this out of the way. So we want yarn that is not only relaxed, but also that retains its original twist. We don't want it to be over twisted or twisting back on itself like that, and we also don't want it to lose twist. Let's look at the process of winding the ball the first time, rewinding it the second time, and then knitting from the ball to see how and when twist is added or removed from the yarn. Because we, what we want, again, is yarn that is, that has its, uh, that it's relaxed and has its original twist. So when you're winding from the Swift to the ball winder, you're going to be cranking your ball winder either clockwise or counterclockwise, whichever is more comfortable for you. And as you do that, the yarn will be spooling off of the Swift and onto the ball winder. The yarn is not acquiring any additional twist, nor is it losing any twist because you're spooling. The Swift can sometimes create tension or resistance as the ball is wound, and because we want the yarn to be relaxed, using the ball winder to wind it a second time can help to create a ball that is much more relaxed, like these two balls. So you can see the difference between these two balls and how relaxed this one is compared to that one. So when we wind the ball of yarn the second time, we're not spooling the yarn off of the existing ball the way that we did off of the Swift. Instead, the yarn comes off of the ball in this way. So it's coming off as it revolves around the ball of yarn. So if the yarn looks like this uh, and we're winding from the out, unwinding from the outside, it's going to come off in a clockwise direction. But we can turn the ball upside down and we can reverse that direction. So now it's coming off the ball counterclockwise. So that's one way to reverse the direction the yarn comes off. What may not be as obvious is that you can reverse the direction the yarn winds off of the ball by pulling from the center instead of the outside. So if you look at this spiral, this is simulating how the ball is, is wound um, around. Now, if we were to unwind it from the outside, as we showed before, it would be coming off in a clockwise direction. But if we start in the center and we unwind, it comes off in a counterclockwise direction. As this yarn unwinds around the ball, every time it makes one complete revolution, it acquires one twist. So the larger the ball, then the larger the circumference and the longer it will take to acquire one twist. But as you wind off the ball and it gets smaller and smaller, the twists are going to become more and more frequent. 
Conversely, if you were pulling from the center, you're going to get lots of twists right at the beginning, but then as you wind off and the center of the ball gets larger and larger, then the circumference the yarn is coming off of gets larger and larger and the twists get less frequent. It can be hard to imagine that this yarn, that the yarn is actually twisting, so it's, it's helpful to see this happen with something flat like ribbon. So here's the spool of ribbon and we can see that as we pull it off and the spool is rotating, the ribbon is coming off without twisting. It's completely flat. But if we pull the ribbon off this way where the spool stays the same, then we can start to see the twists appear in the ribbon. When the yarn or the ribbon re goes around counterclockwise like this, it gets a twist in it that is angled in this direction. We call that an S twist because the angle is the same as it is in the middle part of the letter S. If we wind off clockwise, the twist of the ribbon goes in this angle, which we call a Z twist because of the angle of the middle of the letter Z. So if we are winding yarn off so that it comes off clockwise like this, then when we knit, we want it to come off of the ball counterclockwise in order to counteract the twist that it got when it was wound the second time. So there are lots of ways of winding um, the ball and knitting from it to end up um, with something that's balanced and not over twisted or under twisted. So I'm going to give you two options to make it simple. And which one you choose is going to depend on whether you prefer to knit from the outside of the ball or the inside of the ball. Regardless of which your preference is, you're going to sit your, um, your ball on your table with the center tail coming out of the top. You're going to, you, and you're going to wind from the center regardless. You're, always, you're going to wind from the center, so you're gonna anchor this onto your ball winder and you're going to wind it a second time. Make sure that you're cranking in the same direction, cranking the ball winder in the same direction that you cranked the first time. So if you started out with a ball like this, when you wind it the second time, you should end up with a ball that still looks like this, um, just as bigger and looser. If you started out with one that looks like this with the tail out, then um, you should end up with a ball that looks like this with the tail in that direction, um, but just looser. When you're done winding the second time, if you are going to knit from the outside of the ball, just take the ball off the ball winder so that again, the tail, this tail is coming up from the top. So you're just gonna pull it off just like you did before. And when you knit from it, you're going to knit from the outside. And you wanna make sure that the tail is always um, on the top of the ball while you're knitting. If the ball fall, falls off, if it, you throw in your knitting bag and then bring it back, make sure that when you bring it out of your knitting bag or pick it up off the floor, that it's not with the center tail down because then you're going to be reversing the direction that you're knitting off. You just wanna make sure that if the, that the center tail is always on top so that you're always winding off in the same direction. So when you remove the, um, the ball, in this case, you've cranked it in the same direction, you're going to put your finger on that locked strand that's right there so that when you pull the ball of yarn off, that you can have the tail pull out the other way. And the second winding is much looser. It's much easier to maintain this core for a little bit. It's a little, it's much easier to pull the tail through to the other side than it would be on that original um, ball the first time around. If you look at the single ply yarn, you can see that it has a twist in it and that twist is a Z twist. So this yarn, which is a four ply worsted weight yarn, has an S twist. It's made up of four plies. Each of the plies themselves have a Z twist, but when they're combined together, they twist around themselves to form an S twist. If you remember these two balls of yarn from the beginning, the reason this one ended up so twisted was because I, I wound the, the ball just like I told you from the center, cranking in the same direction I'd cranked the first time. And then I took the ball off and 
and I again knit from the center. So I was just, I kept adding counterclockwise twist to this yarn, which already had an S twist. So it, it was just adding more and more S twist to this yarn. With this ball of yarn, I again, I did the second winding from the center. I cranked in the same direction, but when I pulled this ball off um, the ball winder, I pushed the center tail through to the other side. And you can see that these two balls are oriented in opposite directions. So that tells you that I'm, I'm knitting off of this ball in the opposite direction that I'm knitting off this one. So I'm losing that extra twist I gained in the second winding where here I just added to it. As I mentioned, there are many ways to add or remove twist from the yarn as you wind it and as you knit from it. You can experiment with different possibilities to see which method you prefer when working with different yarns. You may prefer adding Z twist first and then knitting by adding S twist, or you may prefer the opposite. You may also find that you prefer different methods depending on what kind of twist the yarn starts with. But if you want a default method, you can use the options I provided earlier in this video so you don't have to think about it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.